welcome to Entrepods, the most cutting edge podcast for entrepreneurs and investors. We answer the hottest question today. So now what? We are radically civilized with a focus on durable solutions that make the most positive impacts in your business, financial, personal, and community life. The world right now belongs to entrepreneurs. Today, we'll show you through our expert conversations that matter, the limitless opportunities you have right now to live the life of your dreams. The best version of you and your business starts now. Welcome to Entrepods. Hello, Entrepods. This is Jennifer Gligrich here with another wonderful episode. It is going to be me today. Tammy can't make it today, but that's okay because now I get the guests <laughs> all to myself. And today's guest is coming to us from Nashville, Tennessee. Um, they're married with four boys, so he's used to being very busy all the time and a lot of chaos. Um, but he came from a lending background for the last seven years. He's been working in the mortgage and 17. lending in 17 years in the mm -hmm. mortgage and lending industry. And now he's going to teach us how to replace our mortgage. So let us give a big entrepreneur's welcome to Michael Lush with ReplaceYourMortgage.com. Hey, Michael, welcome to the show. Hey. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks for having me. Oh, yeah. I, I love having uh, people like you on the show because this is a little bit different. And uh, so I, I just want to dive right in. So replace yeah. your mortgage. We all want to do that right now, especially with things like Wells Fargo and the things that have been in the news with that. Everybody mm -hmm. has heard of the predatory lending and, and some real horror stories that are that are out there. And it's uh, it's a big seller's market right now. We've all been through a lot. Um, so tell me a little bit about what you do. And but before we do that, why did you decide to get out of such a, you know, quote unquote, stable industry, 17 years of mortgage and banking? Mm -hmm. You know, what made you decide to make a leap to the anti mortgage uh, <laughs> thought, thought, thought? Well, you know, it, <laughs> it, it's an ironic story, definitely funny story. So um, I had been doing it for a long time. And during the subprime meltdown and the real estate meltdown, um, we resurrected. And before that, I was with a publicly traded company, uh, ninth largest lender in the nation. And when we were being resurrected, we had a hedge fund that gave us the money to resurrect and do FHA loans, VA loans, because subprime was now non-existent. So this hedge fund manager out of Connecticut had family in Nashville. So he would fly in from time to time to visit parents. And when he would come in, he would take time to come in and meet with me, consult with me and, and run some numbers. Now, at the time, this is somebody that's worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Now he's a billionaire. And I took the opportunity to try to get in his sphere of influence. I said, look, you indirectly own this company because of your hedge fund. Uh, if I could get in your sphere of influence, I imagine those people do big mortgages. Big mortgages need big paychecks, and that's a win-win for both of us, right? You get the commissions, I get the commissions, and you get your money back faster. And he took about 10 minutes, not long, but he took 10 minutes to explain the strategy to me. And the first thing he said was, my sphere of influence doesn't do mortgages. And I said, well, let me guess. You pay cash for everything. He said, absolutely not. We always use other people's money. And that's when he hit me with a HELOC strategy. He said that he has a first lien position HELOC on his home and that most of his friends do. And everything I've been taught in the mortgage industry with a HELOC is like having a credit card on your home. That's not something that you want. Credit cards are bad, right? And he explained it to me. It took about 10, 15 minutes. And I set out on a journey. And it was right before that journey, he made a comment that has stuck with me to this day. He said, I'm going to be honest with you, Michael. Selling mortgages is like selling financial crack to middle America. It's not something that we have to do. Everyone has an alternative. You don't have to buy a home with a mortgage. You don't have to refinance your mortgage into another mortgage. You can get what's called a first lien position home equity line of credit. So I took a year to try to investigate this. And actually, my mission was to prove him wrong. Because at the time, I had a branch of 70 loan officers and had other branches across the country. And obviously, if, if what I'm doing is wrong, it doesn't feel good internally. So I'm trying to not only prove him wrong because I want his business, but I also need to feel good about what I do. And I hired a CPA and an actuary and a couple of buddies. And together, we just couldn't poke any holes into it. And it was in 2012, I turned to my wife and said, look, I understand this is what I do for a living, but I'm going to go against the grain and we're going to get this other product. And I called countless banks because the bankers don't know what I'm talking about either. Although they have the product, they didn't understand what I was talking about. So finally got on, on the phone with an executive and an underwriter with one and said, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. I said, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Let's, yeah, let's do it. 
So I refinanced my home in 2012 from a mortgage, an FHA mortgage at the time, to a first lien position home equity line of credit at 90% financing. Now, 90% financing, you think, okay, well, you've only got 10% equity in your home. How are you going to take 10% of your equity to pay off the other 90%? You don't. It's a simple refinance. Just like if you refinance from an FHA loan to a Fannie or Freddie, that's all I was doing. I was refinancing my mortgage to a first lien position on my equity line of credit. So the only lien on my home was the HELOC. In long story short, in three short years, we paid off our home. Okay, and so the, <laughs> I've got a lot of questions. Yeah. So number one, uh, number one, like I think, how is this different than just having an extra payment on your house, right? Like it's very it, different. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So a mortgage, that. and let, let me go back and because I've also become a historian on this too. Okay. Um, prior to 1913, a mortgage, which let, let me explain what mortgage means. In old French, a mortgage means death pledge. Okay. That's, that's the root meaning of mortgage is you're signing a contract for life. So Prior to 1913, a mortgage was an open-end instrument, meaning money could move in and out freely. It was very popular prior to 1913, especially with farmers. To this day, it is the most uh, popular product in Australia. It's also the most popular product in the United Kingdom, South Africa, and so on. So we are really the last first world country that is utilizing archaic instruments like a mortgage. But back to the story of 1913. So Prior to 1913, a mortgage could move in and out freely. So you hear those stories of our grandparents and great-grandparents that, you know, yes, they were a better generation. They didn't have TV and social media. They were more educated. So, yeah, they had that advantage. But the mortgage was an entirely different instrument prior to 1913. Money could move in and out freely. So they actually used their mortgage as their checking account. That's how they were able to pay off their homes in five to ten years. Now, what do you think happened in 1913? It changed the mortgage industry forever. I don't know. Wasn't there like a Pop war? Okay. No, no that's was. like 1970. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. The Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. yeah. And that's tied to the Titanic. I just learned that <laughs> off a of conspiracy TikTok. Anyway. Yeah. So in 1913, you have the institution of the Federal Reserve. Now, the Federal Reserve is the backstop to banks. And what the Federal Reserve does is it allows banks to execute one simple strategy, but it's extremely powerful. It's called fractional reserve lending. So for every dollar you put in a bank account, they have 10. For every $10, they have 100, 100,000. They have a million and so on. So after the banks got a hold of this powerful trick, they said, hold up. We've got to get more deposits. Because if I give you a dollar and you snap your fingers and turn it into $10, what's your next question out of me? You got a $5 give, bill? You yeah. got a $10 bill? Yeah, keep giving it to me. So that's what the banks were saying is we need more deposits. So they looked at how people were actually operating. They were operating out of their mortgage. They were dumping money into their mortgage, and when they needed it, they, they were liquid. They could get access to it. So the banks got together and made it very simple. Instead of a simple interest open-end loan, they made it a closed-end compounding interest loan. So money can only go in but not out freely. So this is why I say it's way different than having an extra payment on your mortgage because this is actually a cash flow strategy. With a home equity line of credit, it's a simple interest loan where money moves in and out freely, just like a checking account. So when the banks change the mortgage to a closed-in product, you wouldn't be stupid enough to put all of your income into your mortgage, right? Because when it's time to pay your bills, utilities, vacation, your money is stuck in the bank's treasure chest. So what does that force you to do? Now you've got to leave money behind somewhere else to use for those items, right? Where are you going to leave them? In the bank account, yeah. in your checking or savings that's account, right. right? Voila. So that's what the banks did. That's how they grow core deposits. A lot of people thought that the scheme was to prolong debt and incur more interest to the consumer. That was actually a byproduct. Hmm. So yes, having a 30-year mortgage or a 15-year mortgage you're, you're going to be paying on it longer. It's an amortization loan. So you don't dictate how much of your payment goes towards principal or interest. Where with a home equity line of credit, again, money moves in and out freely. So now we adopt a cash flow strategy. So we abandon the bank altogether. And instead of depositing our money into a checking account, we deposit all of our resources into the home equity line of credit. And a home equity line of credit being simple interest, it recasts automatically every single day for free. Try to do that on a mortgage, you got to pay fees for it. And they only allow you to do it twice over the lifetime alone. 
So why do they limit it so much? Because it's a powerful trick to reduce interest. Where a HELOC, it's free. So let's say you have $100,000, you put 10 grand in, tomorrow you pay interest on 90,000, not 100,000. See, a mortgage is completely opposite of that. Yeah. So if you're cash flow positive and you're dumping money in, but only pulling out when you need to pay for expenses, the residual gets left in there to pay down balance and time and balance are far more important than interest rates. I would much rather have a 9% HELOC, which doesn't exist or extremely low, sometimes lower than mortgage rates today. I would much rather have a 9% uh, HELOC rate than a 3% mortgage rate because I can pay it off quicker and I reduce the interest. You know, I've seen that there's been a lot of HELOCs. They call them uh, get quick, quick cash loans. And then you go into the mm -hmm. bank and then they say it's a HELOC. And you're like, well, wait a minute. I wouldn't be getting a HELOC if for only 20000 if I have $200,000 stuck in my house. So then they mm -hmm. try to shuffle it and you have, you've got to work with them on that because they can't actually come and get your house um, for that. But I've seen a lot of misnaming by banks. We're talking big, you know, the biggest tier one banks by renaming mm -hmm. things HELOC. Why do you think that is? Because I think that people are getting stuck with this commercialized HELOC name for these, you know, super fast, you know, instant you know, up to 25,000, up to 50,000 loans, especially mm -hmm. now when people are rushing, they're like, okay, we just need a little bit to get us out of COVID and then we can reopen up mm -hmm. our restaurant or reopen up this. And uh, why do you think that is? Or you think that they're trying to dilute the idea of a real HELOC by just naming these instruments that when you're not actually putting your home up for it or what's going on with that? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. So a HELOC is still a lien on your home. So it is something that is collateralized by your home. But most people think of a HELOC because HELOC is an acronym for Home Equity Line of Credit. Mm -hmm. So prior to talking to me, and if I told you you need a HELOC, what do you think you're going to have to do? You're going to get a loan above and beyond the balance of your mortgage for the right. value. Right? right. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking replacing the entire mortgage altogether. All so let's say you have a $300,000 home. You have a balance of $200,000 on your mortgage. Mm -hmm. You could actually refinance. Now you're in Texas, so Texas law is a little different. It's 80% financing on HELOCs versus 90% throughout the entire country. But let's say you had a you know $200,000 mortgage, $300,000 uh, value home. You could actually get a HELOC for 250. And mm -hmm. people are like, well, how's that possible? Because I only have $100,000 of equity because it's a refinance. Again, if you refinance the FHA mortgage to a Fannie mm -hmm. Mae conventional loan. You're not doing it just based on the equity. You're restructuring the current loan. So you could do the same thing with a home equity line of credit. You refinance that mortgage, but also get access to some of the other additional equity that you have. Because there's the other benefit of a HELOC. You're not going to pay interest or payments on the portion you haven't used. Hmm. Now, with a mortgage, especially during COVID, you know, people needed access to their equity. Well, if they had job loss, good luck with that. You don't qualify. Right. Now, with qualify. the home equity line of credit, you know, let's say I've got a $300,000 home, I'll have a balance of 200 and I want to get access to another 50, but I don't need it right now. I can get a HELOC for $250,000. I'm paying interest on the $200,000 that's already been used, but I've got access to the other 50 should I need it. And some HELOCs, if you have enough uh, on your credit line, you don't even have to make a payment. So if you don't make a payment, all they do is increase the principal and therefore the minimum payment. It's not ideal, but I've had I've got 5,500 clients and I've had about a dozen go through uh, COVID-19 and they were able to utilize their home equity line of credit like a reverse mortgage where they didn't even have to make payments. The HELOC made payments for them. And in hmm. fact, you can mechanize it as supplemental income. Wow. See, mm -hmm. you know, this is what we talk about entrepods. We, and we, again, we're talking to Michael Lush. If you want to uh, know uh, more, you're going to want to go to replaceyourmortgage.com, replaceyourmortgage.com. But th this is what I'm talking about mindset and money mindset. It isn't just woo woo. It's opening up yourself to the fact that there are other ways to do things that successful people are curious, they're naturally curious, and they think, well, do I have to do it this way? Uh, most people, and I would say, we become institutionalized. This is the mm -hmm. only way you can do it. Or we get bullied into it, or we get, you know, from other people who are ignorant, brainwashed, of, well, brainwashed that says, well, that's got to be a scam because it works mm -hmm. in your favor and life has to be miserable and you've got to feel mm -hmm. miserable the entire time. There must be a slippery slope that if anything happens, you're going to go downhill 
downhill very quickly. That's just the way life is, right? That yes. is just such, that's like about 50 limiting beliefs in the same system, but uh, in the same sentences, but you, you get what I'm talking about. For something like this, this really opens up a whole new world. Are you paying on a debt? Yes. Is your original mortgage getting paid? Yes. E you know, everything is, is happening legally. It's just a different strategy. And it's only because you didn't know about that different strategy. But now you do. All it is is a mathematical solution. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a product that all banks have. Now, whether or not they know they have it and can do it is a different story. And that's what my company does is we also... We don't just consult clients. We also consult banks. That's the other half of our business is consulting banks, letting them know you have products on your balance sheet that are more consumer friendly and let us consult you and show you how you can also make money while saving them money. That's mm -hmm. not typically how banks think, but that's also what we help people do. Yeah, it's, it's quite interesting about that. So what would you say is your biggest, when you bring this up to people or people say, what do you do? Like normally, mm -hmm. what is the biggest pushback you give from people? Especially- Too good to be true. It's too good to be true. That's too it. Too good to be true. And, or and just do will you research. get in trouble? No. I would think that's no, it. it. Yeah. it again, this is, it, this is actually beneficial for banks to understand it because most people who are wanting to go get a home equity line of credit are getting a second lien position, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes if we get a client that gets pushed back from the bank, we get on the phone and consult with not just the banker, but the bank executive, because that's who really needs to know is the chief credit officer. And what you explain to that bank is, look, you're willing to give this person a home equity line of credit and second lien position. Right now, we've got astronomic uh, increase in real estate prices, right? And we've seen this before in 2008, 2009. What happens right. if there's a correction, right? Banks get nervous because that second lien position home equity line of credit is not really secure because if the values drop, the person in first lien position gets all their money back. If there's something left over, then the person in second lien gets some of that money back, if any at all. Mm -hmm. However, what we explain to banks is, look, we're going to put this person in first lien position. There is no other lien. If something happens, you're fully collateralized. So you reduce the risk to the bank, therefore you reduce the risk to yourself. Mm. And again, this isn't something that's new. This has been around for hundreds of years. Like for instance, in Australia, 82% of Australians, this is what they do. They don't do a mortgage. In Australia, they call it a money merge account because you're merging two products into one, mm. your checking account and your mortgage. They're being a HELOC, right? So you're merging your operating account, which is what you put your money into to pay bills and your real estate loan all become one account. Mm -hmm. Now in Australia, the average Australian pays off two homes in 14 years. Guess what the average That's American pays off one home? Seven years, right? No. Not 15. even 30. Not really? Mm-hmm. I thought about, the right? average turnover was seven years. See, even and this is what no, I do all the time, folks. <laughs> the turnover is five to seven years on that loan. Oh, that's on the loan. That's off. what I'm thinking. Five to seven years on the loan to pay it. Oh, but not to pay it yeah. off. Right. Oh. They refinance or sell every five to seven years. Yeah. That's okay. why a mortgage is front loaded with interest because the banks know this. Yeah. You know, the average consumer is going to refinance or sell every five to seven years. So let's front load the interest on the front end so that when they do refinance or sell, we've already made our profits. You ever notice your payoff is roughly the same after seven years as it was, you know, seven years ago? That's yeah. why all you're, all you're doing is paying interest. And in fact, on a mortgage, the first 18 years of a mortgage is more interest than it is principal. You don't actually flip the script and pay more principal than interest until you're 18 years in. Where with yeah, a home equity line of credit, you regain control and now you get to dictate how much goes towards principal and how much goes towards interest. Now, the average Australian also has the highest rate of second home ownership. Why? Because when they adopt this strategy, yeah. they're like, wow, I can pay this home off in five to seven years. I'm going to go get a vacation home. And that's why right. the average Australian pays off two homes in 14 years. And the average American doesn't even do it in 30. Yeah. And all it is is education being willful. Exactly. You know, it's almost willful maliciousness on the fact that we're just not going to talk about it because this mm -hmm. other the, you know, the traditional way really benefits this very small amount of people. So why are they going to want to change it if everybody changes it? But getting education out there and again, financial literacy, which I believe we're a lot more financial literate than people give us credit for um, because GameStop and uh, AMC would never have happened. 
Yeah. <laughs> so <Dogecoin. obviously. laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then, then, then uh, those things are going to happen. But yeah, so it's really, so it's really fascinating. So um, besides just going to replaceyourmortgage.com, dot um, what are other things people can do to look this up other than looking up HELOC? We have tons of free resources. So if you go to mm -hmm. Replace Your Mortgage on YouTube, just type mm -hmm. in Replace Your Mortgage. We have tons of videos, dozens of videos. If you go to the website, replaceyourmortgage.com, we actually have a free book. So just oh, download good. the book and we'll send you the free book. So tons of free uh, information on it. Research the crap out of it. Actually go into it as a skeptic and then book a consultation. Well, there's nowhere on our website can people just sign up to pay us. We don't allow it. Everyone has to go through a free 45-minute consultation. And on that consultation, we determine if it's right for you because that it's not right for everybody. And one of the key ingredients to do this is you have to be cash flow positive. So what that means is you got to understand your budget. You got to have more money coming in than what's going out. If you don't, then you should be on a mortgage because that's going to force you to pay down the principal. But mm -hmm. with a home equity line of credit, if you're cash flow positive, you not only need to switch the product, you also have to switch your, it's a paradigm shift. You also have to switch your thinking too. abandon the checking account. The HELOC now becomes your checking account because these HELOCs come with debit cards, checks, online bill pay, et cetera. So money moves in and out of your HELOC every single day for free. And you just use the mathematical equation to your advantage. So can is someone use it for, let's say, their very first home? Yes. Yep. There are very few, but there are banks out there that do what I call purchase money mortgages. Or I'm sorry, purchase money HELOCs. So if you have 10% down, not in Texas, unfortunately, but mm -hmm. in Texas is 20%. Outside of Texas is 10%. So there's quite a few, no, I would say quite a few. We know about a dozen banks that will do purchase money HELOC. So if you've got 10% to put down at the closing table, you're not closing on a mortgage. You're closing on a home equity line of credit. Now there are other benefits that come along with it. HELOCs mm -hmm. never have mortgage insurance. So there are banks that will do $1.3, $1.5 million home equity lines of credit in first lien position. And even if you don't have 20% down, you never have mortgage insurance. The other thing, the closing cost on a home equity line of credit is a fraction of what it is on a mortgage. Mm -hmm. So more of that money stays in your pocket and works to your advantage. I'm taking notes on this. I'm going to go and find it because I, I, I know people who are looking right now and this, this would be perfect for them. They are cash flow positive and, and uh, you know, I'm going to want to learn more about it so I can talk more about it. This mm -hmm. is so interesting. I'm so glad that Tammy reached out to you. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, now, and now I get to meet you and now you get to be on the show. Okay, guys, well, we're getting to the end of it. Um, we have learned a whole lot from Michael Lush. So we've been talking to Michael Lush at replaceyourmortgage.com. And if you want to go to replaceyourmortgage.com, you'll find out more about him. So I want to thank you for being on the show today, Michael. This has been amazing. Thanks for having me, Jennifer. Take care. Yeah. God bless. I feel like there's just so much more that we could talk about, but we ran out of time, but that's okay because y'all need to go and ask it. If y'all have a question for Michael and you want to know more, just email Tammy, T-A-M-M-Y at entrepods.com. Don't forget to like, comment, and share, especially if you know someone who this may apply to. Let's spread the education and knowledge out and be sure to give us five stars. That's how we keep on getting amazing guests that educate us and change our minds and help us out to where we can to have the right entrepreneurial mindset and know more of what's available to us. So thanks again, Michael. And thanks again, Entrepods. And y'all have a great week. Bye-bye. Thank you for listening. And please go give us a five-star rating on your preferred listening platform if you enjoyed the show. This helps us reach more listeners like you and keep booking amazing guests. If you'd like to join our growing Entrepods community, want our social media links to like or share, or inquire about one-on-one -on -one strategy calls with our host, Jennifer, please visit Entrepods.com. See you next time. And here's to you and your best life imaginable.